So we are going to start a new chapter, chapter three. It's on machine language coding. Usually microprocessors know the binary language, a language composed of zeros and ones. So if you are to instruct your processor to do some operation, you have to encode <clears throat> this instruction into zeros and ones. So we are going to deal in this chapter on how to convert an assembly language, the first high level language, into a machine language, into zeros and ones. And each and every instruction, you need to make your processor perform it, operate on, should be converted into a machine language. So you have to encode the instruction into zeros and ones for a machine language. <clears throat> so what do we have to include into our code? If you are to encode an instruction, uh, an operation the processor should perform. So what you have, what information you have to include inside your code, okay? Definitely, you have to include some bits to instruct and inform your processor of the operation you need to perform. So the code should include some or a few zeros and ones through which your processor can know the operation you need to perform. And this portion of the code is known as opcode. So you have to include some bits to tell the, uh, the processor about the operation you need to perform. What else do you need to include? Okay, you have to include some other bits to tell your processor whether the operation is to be performed on a byte, eight bits, or a word, 16 bits. Because your 8086, 8088 processors have 16 bit registers. So, and these registers are used to store data temporarily. So the data is taken from registers, could be the whole 16 bits and you operate on a word, or eight bits and you operate on a byte. So you have to include some bits inside your code to tell the processor whether to get eight bits or 16 bits from somewhere. And you have as well to inform the processor about the data to be operated on and whether you need a single operand or two operands. So operands are data to be operated on. Do your processors have to get or perform the operation on a single operand or two operands? So some bits inside your code should tell the processor about this information. And operands, the data to be operated on, are stored somewhere. Are they stored in registers or register and memory locations? So you have to include inside your code some bits to inform the processor where to get the operands from, from a register to registers, a register and memory location. This should as well be included inside your code. And if the operand, the data to be operated on, is stored in a memory, how to generate the address, as we previously mentioned, memory are byte addressable. Each and every byte in your memory is given a specific and unique address. See, if you are storing your operand in some memory location, you should tell the processor how to generate the address of this specific memory location to get the data from. Okay. The machine code for general purpose processors like 8086 and 8088 is variable. It doesn't have a fixed length and it could go up to six bytes. So your code should go or can go up to six bytes from a single byte, from one byte up to six bytes, depending on the uh, operation you need to perform and the instruction you need to tell the processor to do. Okay, single byte instructions are simple instructions and they deal with a register or a flag bit. 
usually instructions that deal with a register or a flag bit are composed of single bytes. For example, if you need to complement the carry bit, as we know, the carry bit is a bit inside your flag register, and somehow, if you need to complement it, which means if it is a zero, you need to make it one. If it's a one, you make it a zero for some reason the programmer knows of. If you need to complement the flag, the carry bit, you would have to tell <coughs> the processor how to do this, and this is taken only a single byte F5 hexadecimal. So if this F5 goes to the instruction decoders, the instruction decoders would know that you need to complement your carry bit. So it consumes only a single byte. It costs you a single byte of memory to save this instruction in. Again, sometimes you need a single operand, and this single operand is a register, DL, the lower byte of your data register. And you need here to increment it by one, add one to the content of the DL. To do this, this is the assembly code, INC DL. Okay, the general instruction format, the largest format is composed of six bytes. So now we're going to discuss the multi-byte instructions. And here are the six bytes, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Each byte is composed of some fields, for example, Byte number one is composed of three fields, six bits for the opcode field and a single bit field named D for destination. If a one is stored here, it means the register in the second byte is a destination. If a zero is stored here, it means the register in the second byte is a source. Whether you are performing this operation on a word or a byte is defined by the third field in the first byte, which is a single bit field called or named W. If one is placed here, the operation is to be performed on a word. If a zero is stored here, this means the operation is to be performed on a byte. Okay, the second byte is composed of three fields. A two-bit field named mod, which determines whether the second operand is in a register or a memory. If one, one is stored here in mod, it means the second operand is a register. But if zero, 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 one, or zero one is placed it means the second operand is in a memory and talking about memory there are many mode addresses and we need three combinations to inform the processor how to generate the memory address of this memory location in generating memory addresses, you may need a displacement, 8-bit displacement, or 16-bit displacement, or no displacement. This is why we have three combinations, 8-bit displacement, no displacement, or 16-bit displacement. And you can also include your data inside the instruction. In some cases, the data is internally embedded in the instruction. This is why two bytes are reserved to include 16 bit of data if you require this. Okay.
Okay, now we're going to discuss in details the different fields inside the instruction. Uh, byte number one, as we mentioned, contains three fields. Okay, six, this, the first six bits are reserved for the opcode. What type of operation the instruction is telling the processor to perform? Then a single bit field called D, which informs the processor whether the register in byte 2 is a destination if one is placed or is a source if 0 is placed. The third field of the first byte is named W and it tells the processor whether to perform the operation on a word if one is reserved or a byte if 0 is stored inside this W. Right, so this is regarding the first byte. Talking about the second byte, we get the second operand, whether it is in a, a register or a memory, and if it's in a memory, how to generate the address. Okay, so we have three fields. The register is used for the other operand, the second operand. Where the other operand, first or second, is stored, is it in a register or in a memory location? Good. If in reg field a three bit field to point to a register three bit field because we do have eight registers so we need to have three bits assigned to refer to a register and along with these three bits a single field named D is reserved to know whether the register is a destination or a source. Okay. Here are the three bits. Eight different combinations. We have eight different registers. Then can can be used and dealt with as 8-bit registers or 16-bit registers depending on whether W is holding a 0 or a 1 and here you are if the reg field contains three zeros it depends on whether W is a 0 or W is a 1 if W is a 0 you mean your register is AL. If W is 1, this means your register is AX and so on. If you store in reg 011, if W is 0, it means you are referring to the BL register. If W is 1, you are referring to the BX register. Good. How about mode now? The two bit field. Okay, if this 2-bit field contains a 1-1, one, one, it means the other operand is a register. If it contains 0-0, zero, zero, means no displacement, 0-1, zero, you generate the address, the memory address, with 8-bit eight, eight displacement, 1-0, you generate your memory location by 16-bit displacement okay now the three bit register the three bit field named r slash m tells the processor about the other operand is it stored in a register if mode is one one is it stored in a memory do we need no displacement do we need 8-bit displacement or 16-bit displacement to generate the address? Here you are. Okay, mode is the mode field is 1-1. One, one. It means you are talking about registers. So the other operand is a register, and you can reach this register by these eight different combinations. But if the other operand is in memory, you would have to 
show how to generate the memory address okay do you need displacement either 8 displacement or 16 or no displacement okay depending on r slash m field for example if r slash m field is 0 1 0 and your mod field is 0 1 this means the memory location is inside your stack memory segment because of this BP and you go to this memory location by adding the content of the BP to the content of the SI to the 8 bits placed in the displacement byte the first displacement byte which contains the 8 bits so you go to this memory location by adding three contents all right one in bp the other content of the si and inside the instruction you have an 8-bit displacement adding these together you can generate the address of the memory location in which the other operand is placed and so on okay so you have always to refer to this table to know where to get the other operand from okay but three and four they could be used to store either displacement if any or a data all right the low byte is stored first then the high byte low and low high and high indian format if you use byte 3 and byte 4 to store displacement then byte 5 and byte 6 are used to store data all right so if 3 and 4 contain a displacement then 5 and 6 will contain data good for example let's take an example okay find the machine code of this good first we need to know the opcode of this move instruction then your first operand is a, res a register and it's a destination register all right so probably and this is bl and al so you would have to include one in d to tell the processor the first operand is a destination then zero and w to tell the processor we are performing the move on eight bits and then this should be preceded by the six bits of the opcode okay regarding the second byte the other operand is a register so mold has to include one one and you go to the table to know the bits required to be placed in r slash m field to refer to al good first this is the opcode of the move so now you add here one and a zero and this is your first byte of, of the machine code okay up then d is one and w is zero good up D is 1, W is 0. Good. The second byte, mod is 1, 1. Okay. R slash M is zeros. And then register is 0, 1. This 0, 1, 1 in reg refers to BL. And R slash M three zeros refers to AL. So now, now your total machine code is composed only of two bytes the first byte is 8a hexadecimally the second byte is d8 and this is what you will build, will, you will be graded on in your exams so i'll look at this final results in hexadecimal whatever you do here you get the binary format of your instruction 
then you convert it to hexadecimally. If this is correct, you will get the full mark. Otherwise, you will get a zero. So you have to pay attention to the way you generate your binary machine code from before converting it to hexadecimal. Make sure you get it correctly and you convert it correctly to get your full mark. Okay, let's take another example. So we need to convert this assembly code into a machine code. Add AX comma SI. First, we need to know the opcode of the add. Then the first register mentioned in this instruction is AX and it is used as a destination. So we need to get the three bit field for AX. Then we need to set D as one for destination, W as one for 16 bits. Then the other operand is a memory location. So we need to go to the table and see SI in the table, go vertically to get the two bits for the mod field and go horizontally to get the three bits for the R slash M. If we do so, we'll get this. So now this is the opcode of the add instruction. It seems that the first thing a human being needed on the earth is to add things up. This is why it's been given six zeros. Okay. Then we have here the six bits for the opcode. D should be one. W should be one. We get the three bit for the register. We go upward to get the two bit field for the mode. And we go horizontally to the left to get the R slash M for SI. This is what we get. Okay, so this is the three bit for the register, AX. We go up to get the mode, which was zero, zero. Horizontally to the left, we get one, zero, zero. And the overall machine code for this instruction is this. Again, we convert it to hexadecimal. It's a zero, three, zero, four. And this again, what will be graded on? the equivalent hexadecimal digits for the machine code. Okay, let's take a third example, which is this one. This is the assembly code. We need to XOR CL, the content of CL, with the 8-bit stored in this memory address. Again, we need to know the opcode, the 60 bits for the opcode of the XOR. Here, the first register mentioned in the instruction is CL, used as destination. So D is 1, and it is an 8-bit register. So W is 0. Again, this direct address, we go to the table, go up to get the mod, the 2-bit for the mod, horizontally to the left, to get the three bits for the R slash M. If you did so, this is first the opcode of the X or then, okay. D as we mentioned is one, it's a destination. W is zero, we'll go to the table to get the three bits for the CL register, then vertically to get the mode, horizontally to get the R slash M. And here you are. The first byte, this is your opcode. Again, W D is 1, W is 0. And the 3 bit for the register from the table is 0, 0, 1. The 2 mode for the direct address is 0, 0. And R slash M is 1, 1, 0. This is again the overall, the overall machine code for this instruction. It's one, two, three, four byte instruction. Okay, this is the four byte, the first byte, second, third, fourth, and convert it to hexadecimally. Okay, this is because after getting these two 
bytes for the instruction, we need to store this displacement into byte three and four. Low, low in low and high in high. So the 34 should be placed in byte three. This is byte three. These are the 34, then 12, 1 and 2. This is why we needed an additional 2 bytes to place the displacement, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 hexadecimal. And the overall instruction is a 4 byte instruction. 4 byte instruction because we needed to to convert the operation we need to do XOR operation okay then the memory address is given by a displacement a 16-bit displacement 1 2 3 4 5 this is why we needed to store them 1 2 3 4 5 hexadecimally in by 3 and 4 and the overall an instruction is a four byte instruction. Okay. So let's take a fourth example. This is an assembly code. We need to convert it to a machine language. If you look at this code, your source is a memory location given by two registers and a direct displacement of 16 bits then the register used here is ax which is a source so now your d should be 0 and w should be 1 16 bit register it's a word register used as a source okay so we need to get the six bits for the add assembly code which is six zeros then we go to rig to get the three bit for the register. We make sure that D is zero and W is one. Then we go to the table and look at this format for the memory address. Go vertically to get the two bits for the mod, horizontally to get the three bits for R slash M then you have to add this additional 16-bit displacement inside your instruction which would be again a 4-byte instruction let's this is the opcode for the add six zeros then you have to add here a zero one you get the two bits for the mode three bit for reg three bits for the r slash m then you place here 34 and you place here a 12 all right d is 0 w is 1 reg the three bits for the reg the two bits for the mod the three bits for the r slash m then you have one two three four again this is 34 and this is 12 the 16-bit displacement the equivalent hexadecimal of this machine language is this okay good the way we discussed the conversion from assembly language into a machine language so far did not take care of the sign extension by sign extension we mean that the sign bit sometimes in arithmetic operations we need to extend it to other bits so we have to include this in our coding from when we convert assembly language into machine language or when we code the machine language we have to assign some bits and in the instruction to refer to this sign extension if we wish okay and we did not mention anything about the segment register as well we have four different segment registers they are dealt with in an instructing microprocessor to do and perform operations so again, our machine code has to take care of this and to include some bits to refer to the segment register we are dealing with. 
So we have to modify the way we convert the assembly language into a machine language to take care of these drawbacks. So the way we are going to deal with these drawbacks is we have for each and every instruction we have a table that helps the programmer to take care of these drawbacks easily. For example, for the move instruction, when we move a data from a place to another place between registers and memory locations, uh, we have to check this table. So if you are moving a data from a register or a memory to another register, okay, so we have to use this code. So you need only to supply whether the register is a destination or a source and whether you're dealing with a word or a byte and you get these field from the table and if you have displacement this is the low and this is the high displacement and if you are moving an immediate data to a register you have to supply only in this bit whether you're dealing with a word or a byte and the rig field should be provided here three bits so this is four bits five bits and this completes the first byte you get the register the three bit for the register from the table place them here then you place the data here if you're dealing with a byte and you use these two bytes for the data for the immediate data you're moving to a register if you're dealing with a 16 bit of information and so on so you have to check this table and to take this code supply only the missing information okay good for example for this instruction move okay we're moving an immediate data a b c d hexadecimally into a memory location referred to by this good no register is included so you have to go back to the table and check the instruction the machine code given in the table which deals with moving immediate data to a memory location good and in getting the two bits for the mod and the three bits for the r slash m field you have to check your table again and look at the memory location referred to by bpdi and the displacement you go up to get, to get the two bits for the mod and you go horizontally to the left you get the three bits for the r slash m then your byte number three and byte number four should be used to play the displacement n again low and low and high and high while your byte number five and byte number six should include these data low and low and high in high okay good so let's check our table and see what we are getting okay from the table here is the table row which deals with moving immediate data into a register or a memory so you have to take this as is and you only supply the missing information w are we dealing with a word or a byte of data we're dealing with a word so we place one here 
then as we said mod and r slash m are obtained from the table the displacement low should be 34 high should be 12 the data low should be cd the data high should be ab and here you are when you check the table you get mod 10 r slash m 011 and here are the machine code okay this is the first two bits the third bit 34 the fourth bit 12 the fifth bit is cd and the sixth bit is ab and when you convert this into hexadecimal numbers you will get this code for the given instruction and once more this is what you are be you are going to get graded on okay for example addition this is add the instruction add are you adding a register to either another register or a memory if you're doing so you have to pick this row and you supply only the missing on information dw mod reg r slash m displacement if any for the decrement instruction if you are to going to decrement a value in a register or a memory by one you have to use this code for the first byte and you supply w if you're doing with a byte or a word you're taking this as is you have to supply the two bits for the mod and the three bits for r slash m and so on for the increment you have to pick whatever information is given in the row and you only supply the missing data okay okay here are some fields you get it from the instruction set table to do some required operations by your microprocessor for example the sign extension there is a single bit field named s for the sign extension you place a zero in this field if you don't need to extend the sign bit and you place a one if you need to extend the sign bit and convert 8 bit number immediate to 16 bits and another field one bit field named v for shifting or rotating a number if you have a number and you need to shift this number or rotate it by a single bit so you shift to the right or left or rotate to right or left by a single bit you place zero in this field but if you need to shift or rotate the number by certain number of bits placed in cl to instruct your processor to go to cl and get the number inside cl and rotate or shift the given register by this number inside your cl you place v you place one in a v and if you repeat or loop if you are executing a program and you need to repeat or loop while the zero flag is clear you place zero and z if you need to do so while the zero flag is set you place one and z good regarding the segment registers two bit field two bit field is assigned to this which is sr so whenever you check your instruction set table and you encounter this field sr two bit field you would know what to place in this r field using this table if you are referring to the extra memory segment extra register es you place 0, 0 for the code segment register you place 0, 1 for the stack segment register 
104 the data segment register you place one one okay here is an example move the value inside your ds so your register here is a source register to this memory location referred to by BPDI and a displacement. Okay, so you have to go to your instruction set table, instruction set table, and go to a row which indicates how to move a data from a segment register to a memory location. Here you are segment register to a register or a memory location so the first byte is all set for you mod and r slash m you get it from the table you move vertically to get the two bit for the mod field you go horizontally to the left you get the three bits for the r slash m this is set zero for you and sr now you're dealing with the data segment register so you place one one in this field for the data segment register one one in this field for the data segment register and this is what you get for the two bit field of the mode and this is what you get for the r slash m all right and here you have a displacement low you place 34 n displacement high you place 12 n you will get your one two three four byte instruction convert them into hexadecimal digits and this is your machine code expressed in hexadecimal format this is an example for you so train yourself to use the instruction set table Converting this program from the assembly into a machine code. Okay, using the instruction set table. And here is the result of doing so. So you can check your result through this table. All right. And this is it for the machine coding chapter okay